Hello and welcome back to SnowRunner. Now, in this video, we're going to be checking out the very first public release from F19 Mods, and it is this, the Freelux. Now, this is a fully console-friendly vehicle with files for every console. That ranges from current generation to previous generation to Nintendo Switch and, of course, PC, which is what we're using it on right now. Now, at the time of recording this video, it has not yet been approved for consoles, but uh, check back on your uh, particular console mod browser if you are watching this video later on in the future and if and when it does get approved which i'm sure it'll get approved at some point soon i will uh make a pinned comment in the uh comments down below just to let you guys know that it has of course been approved now this is of course based on a toyota hilux and this is actually the fully stock form that it comes in. This is with no customization at all, apart from changing the paint color. Now, before we get to the driving, we're going to take it into the garage, and we're going to see what kind of customization options we have, but if you want to skip ahead to the driving, I also completely understand if you want to do that. But, for those of you that want to keep an eye on the customization, keep watching, so let's fire it up and get it in the garage. <laughs> Now, it is definitely worth mentioning that this mod is designed to be both balanced and fun. So, whether you want to have a vanilla game plus experience, or if you want this thing to be just a little bit more powerful but nothing too crazy, you can have both of those approaches. Now, let's see. We're going to start off with a 1.8 liter NA engine, and then we can go up to a 2.4 or a 3.0. For the purposes of this video, we're going to go out to the 3.0, but it is also worth noting, again, for those of you that are really concerned about game balance, this is only an A+, even with the uh, the top-spec 3-liter engine. Now, gearbox-wise, you got the stock gearbox, the off-road gearbox, and the highway-use gearbox. We're going to use the off-road gearbox for sure, and then, as far as suspension goes, we're going to be doing uh, probably just the, the lift. I mean, th there's not much that the lift adds apart from, like, a, you know, it's an extra one inch of height, but I wonder if the lifted suspension or the lifted version of the suspension will give us maybe a little bit more flex, a little bit more suspension droop, a little bit more down travel. We'll have to wait and see. Now, tires-wise, you have a smaller selection, which I would assume is to probably keep this a little bit more RAM-friendly on consoles. But let's see. We've got some 33-inch Nitto Trail Graps. We've also got 35-inch Nitto Trail Grapplers. Ooh, different. Oh, wait, no. Same wheels, but God, the wheels themselves look sick. I didn't even realize how good those wheels looked until I got it in the garage. Now, I think we're going to go with the Trail Grapplers. The Trail Grapplers definitely suit this thing the best. And we're going to go with those in 35. And then winch-wise, oh, we're going to need to rank up, I guess, to get those winches or we can just dev tool them in. Um, but you do have an extended winch, a powerful winch, and a budget winch. Um, and then you've got an ARB airlocker set. And then snorkel-wise, we're definitely going to go ahead and put the safari snorkel on there. And then you have the options for an LED light bar up top. You've got an OE bull bar, which you can do. Um, we've also got custom side steps, which are totally available if you want to go that route. I'm kind of back and forth on them because they're not sliders. Um, then there's there's also the, yes, the rack with the rooftop tent. I love it. And, of course, bed supplies, which would come in very handy, both in terms of trail riding and uh, using this thing in your campaign mode. Now, let's see. Custom rear bumper for sure. And, ooh, let's see. I am actually really digging this custom front bumper. I just don't know about the antennas. I'm back and forth about the antennas. They're really cool, don't get me wrong, but I'm back and forth about whether or not I actually would want to keep them on there. Now, let's see. We've got some custom beadlock wheels. And what are these? Oh, these are more of like a like a steel wheel style. And then, of course, you've got the stock wheels. We're going to go with the custom beadlock wheels. And then in terms of color options, you've got a massive range. Yo, look at these. Oh, that's really cool. So many different liveries and design styles. Oh, that's amazing. TRD livery. That's so cool. We're definitely going to do that. And we are also, of course, going to throw beans on the dash. And then now, it's time to take this thing out on some trails and see what it's all about. Now, map-wise, we are on the Rockingham map at the moment because Rockingham is a really good map to use to kind of, like, get a sense of how something is going to be on the trails, but not necessarily take it into, you know, like, full-on rock crawler, rock bouncer territory. You know, even with that A-plus power-to-weight rating not seeming like a lot compared to some other vehicles, it's still fast. And you know what? It looks like it's going to have some decent flex, too. Oh, boy. Yeah, those roots are kind of in the way, aren't they? Let's go around this side. Easy. 
But here's the thing, we're gonna have to avoid that tree. Oh, that tree is like exactly where we don't want it to be, isn't it? There we go. Lockers, make sure they're on. And a, another thing to note is that the lockers on this truck are fully switchable. They're not on all the time. I know that when I did a video recently um, where we talked about the differences between mods and vanilla vehicles and game balance came up as a topic, some comments specifically referenced, well, anything with diff lock always on is automatically OP. And while I don't necessarily agree with that, if that is something that you feel, um, this does give you the option to turn the lockers on and off. Easy. Little bit of damage on the corner of the bumper there, but it's not too bad. The interior view is also amazing. Both the tack and the speedometer are fully functional. We've got the classic style Toyota steering wheel in here. You can see all of the, like, literally all the details on the interior. You can see your transfer case shifter. You can see your gearbox shifter, your AC controls. It's all there. It is absolutely all there for you. Keep in mind, this is also just standard low. This isn't even low plus, and this thing is just absolutely doing an amazing job. Although, I kind of messed up my line there. We're going to need to take a little bit of a different line through this obstacle. Let me give it a little bit more wheel speed. It does not seem like it's into that. Let's see if we can give it... Oh, there we go! A little bit of a wheel speed bump, and then put it back into low, turn the lockers back on. So it's actually interesting because even though the lockers weren't on, the extra wheel speed of it being in automatic mode was actually what gave us that little bump that we needed over the obstacle. So it really all comes down to the strategy that you want to use when you want to use it and how it affects your current situation. There we go. Got a little bit of extra. Oh, no, we slid back down. Work the front wheels. There we go. Oh, look at that wheel lift, dude. Look at the flex on that. That's basically fully stretched out. It's fully tucked in in the back, too. Such a beast of a little truck. I love it. And the fact that this is basically designed to be able to run on every single system, including Switch, like, you know, previous gen, next gen, well, I guess it would be current gen, and then Switch as well, and PC. Yo, this thing is literally designed around the con concept that everyone should be able to enjoy it, and I absolutely love that. And I've always loved this particular style of Toyota, too. This style and this generation of Hilux will always have a very special place in the off-roading community just in general, whether or not you're a Toyota fan. I mean, even people that are not dedicated Toyota fans, they know these trucks, they enjoy these trucks, and even if they're not a fan of them, they can always respect them, you know? Just for their sheer, like, strength and capability and resilience, dude. The grip is really well-tuned as well because it's not over the top levels of grip, but it's just enough to where you're like, oh yeah, I could totally get some work done with this thing. Here we go. It's dropping it in. Uh-oh. Oh, we're caught a little bit on the front end. It's fine. You know, if you're just like chilling down through a trail, I would honestly more often recommend low in this truck than I would low plus. Although the reason I say that is because low in this feels a lot more like low plus in a lot of other trucks. And low plus is a lot more of a scramble up an obstacle gear than it is a cruising gear in this truck. Oh, there's a flex shot for you. Yes, dude. That's so sick. Uh-oh. We obliterated our turn signal. Let's fix that real quick. Big yike. Not on the truck's part, but big yike on our part for obliterating the turn signal like that. Sheesh. But, I mean, that can happen when you're off-roading. I mean, especially when you're in a bunch of tight rocks. You may smash a light here and there. Like, I mean, if you're going into a rock garden like this, you know, and you're thinking you're going to keep your vehicle 100% pristine, you may or may not be lying to yourself because you better be prepared for a little bit of cosmetic damage. And who knows? Maybe a little bit of, you know, like, uh... Uh, actual functional damage, too. Whoa, big slide. All right. Oh, oh, I came off the ramps. I was like, can we just send it off the ramp? I slid off the ramp halfway up and lost a lot of my speed, but that's okay. I wonder how it'll do through here at some speed. Honestly, pretty well. I mean, it's no pre-runner, but God, it gets the job done. Look at that. The high-speed suspension performance isn't bad at all. It's actually... 
it's actually really good, especially for something that you would think is predominantly designed around, you know, slow-paced trail riding. When you kick the speed up a notch or two, I mean, I hit a root there, so oh, don't worry about that, but when you kick the speed up a notch or two, it goes. I mean, it still gets down and gets to work. Now, I do have another test in mind for this thing that I really want to see how it performs in, and that is some slightly gnarlier trails that are down this way to the right and then to the left. And you know, I know that they said this was the, uh, the off-road gearbox, but it's got some good pace to it. I mean, if you had to rip your way around some roads on a vanilla map to get somewhere, this would be nothing to sneeze at in terms of speed. Definitely not. Send it. Oh! <laughs> oh, we almost tanked it, dude. We almost freaking tanked it. Now, in terms of setting it up for some really challenging stuff, this is where we're going to run into that. So lockers are on and all-wheel drive is on as well. This is where, yeah, we're gonna get body damage. I mean, I've already accepted that. We're going into it with the understanding and knowledge of uh, we may be coming out of here with body damage, but that's okay. So far, pretty good. Especially considering the fact that we're on a dang 35. I mean, most of the vehicles I come through here with are on, you know, 40s or bigger and they still have issues. All right, get the truck rotated. Got to get it up and over that edge. That's the biggest thing. Okay, there it is. Not bad, not bad. Come on. No freaking way, dude. No freaking way. So calm and collected and controlled up the entire obstacle. Okay, this thing... Hats off. I mean, you absolutely just have to, even if, again, even if you're not a Toyota fan, hats off to this little thing. It is so dang good. But if y'all enjoyed this video and this look at this truck, let me know your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments down below. And if you're new around here and you would like to stay up to date and, of course, see more, hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. And I will see y'all next time.